Hi everybody, this is Joy Halstead and I'm welcoming everybody to Soapbox this evening. Um, we have a great show lined up. It's a subject that probably most people don't think about. So it's going to be interesting to kind of share this information and, and you know, let people know what's going on out in the real world. Um, but until I, before I get into it too deeply, I want to go ahead and um, mention our sponsors. Uh, we have Pizza's Pizza, which is located between Capitol and N on, on 21st Street. They have great pizza. Uh, I would mention to everybody to go ahead and try this pizza, because once you try it, you may not want to eat other pizza. And also, our other sponsor is James Israel. He's the editor of Humor Times. And this paper is just wonderful. I actually just got the latest copy of it, and it's just chock full of amazing artwork. Um, the humor is just wonderful. It's a political satire, and uh, anybody that even knows a little bit about politics will appreciate this. So please check it out. That's humortimes.com. So tonight I have a lady, her name is Patricia Darty, and she is the uh, organizer, one of the organizers with SACRideHuman.org. And um, they've, they've stumbled upon a, a situation that we have with our Sacramento Regional Transit. And the people that we have that are, doing, uh, that are securing, so-called so securing the trains in the areas, um, the group, uh, they're called G4S, and I'm not an expert on it, but Patricia is, and there are some interesting things going on. I guess they have a contract that's going to be coming up for renewal, and um, there's some things we're finding out that aren't too wonderful about this group. So with no further ado, I'll let you go ahead and fill in the gaps, because I'm sure you know ten times more than I do about it. Well, thank you very much, Joy, for having me on the show and, and for this opportunity to, to speak to, uh, to Sacramentans about, about the situation. So yes, our Sacramento Regional Transit does contract with a company called G4S. Uh, to provide security on the light rail systems, okay? So regional transit is the buses mm -hmm. as well as our light rail system. So G4S, um, there are about 90 workers um, provided through the G4S company um, to for security on light rail. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, our issue is not with the workers on our light rail um, as, as trains. Our issue is with the company G4S. It is a huge uh, multinational uh, se private security company. In fact, the largest security company in the world. I think it's like the second largest employer in the world. Are they Swiss based? They are okay. Danish and British. Okay. Um, but they have subsidiaries around the world, and of course, obviously, here in the United States, they also have subsidiaries in Israel, Palestine, and I'll speak about that a little bit further. But all, all really, all around the world, um, supposedly somewhere like 125 different countries. Wow. So uh, yeah, so they're, so they're huge. So our issue is with the company, okay? So our Sacramento Regional Transit pretty much inherited uh, G4S because Wack and Hut. Who, it has its own issues, but that's another that's another thing. They ended up buying out Wackenhut. G4S bought out Wackenhut, and um, so since that time, uh, RT has had uh, G4S providing security along with the um, county and and city police um, for security on the light rail. So um, when we became aware of the situation, we felt, well, you know, RT is really, it's, it's a governmental entity. You know, we the people, we should have a say in this. It receives federal do our tax dollars. And we're writers. I know you're a writer. Yes, <laughs> daily. <laughs> yes. So, so um, when we learned that G4S was providing the security, we then um, started engaging with the RT board and staff. To, with, with three asks, really. Our first ask was to not extend the contract with G4S. Uh, the contract, as you mentioned, is due to expire in June of, of this year, 2016. In the past when that's happened, um, 
our, the RT board has automatically extended it. There, it. In the contract, it's possible to extend it a year or two. So, so they have the ability, actually, to not extend the contract. Um, and they can make that decision now and go out for requests for proposals and allow other companies to bid. We can go into that a little bit further. Our second request was that um, they incorporate, incorporate um, socially responsible um, criteria into their procurement uh, policy. So, um, and then the third, of course, would be to go out for RFPs um, and if G4S were to bid and not to have reformed its way not to, not to extend the contract to them. So that's why Sacramento RT, because we actually have G4S working in our, in our community, having a contract, a $4 million a year contract. So it's, it's a lot of money. That's such a chunk um, of change. Yeah, sure. and, and because we feel that we should have a say. Um, because it's our it's our regional transit. This is not a, a private company. All right. Um, so a little bit more why G4S and who G4S. I mentioned that it's a this huge company, private security company, and they're essentially bad actors in a couple of different areas. One is they've had um, abuses in private prisons, um, and um, around the world. And in the United States, they they run. Um, a number of juvenile detention facilities, mostly in the southern states, and in a um, in a grand jury uh, statement last year for out of Florida, they called uh, the the facilities uh, a disgrace. And there's been reports, uh, documented reports of abuse, both physical and sexual abuse, um, in these, as well as in Britain. Britain has been in the news quite a lot lately with issues of abuse in their juvenile detention centers run by G4S. So that's one area. Um, and, and then also, they're involved here in the United States, they are involved with ICE, uh, Homeland Security, mm. in um, transporting um, undocumented uh, men, women, and children uh, to detention centers throughout the United States and then for eventual deportation. So um, that, but not just in the United States, in other countries, there have been uh, abuses in, within that system where um, uh, there's even been deaths um, in South Africa and some issues in, in um, Australia as well, and even in, in the UK that as well. That sounds horrible. Yeah, and then the other is uh, violations of international law, complicity with this, um, and also international law, human rights, and rights of the child. Um, that is happening in um, Israel-Palestine, where children are detained, uh, often without um, their, uh, certainly without a lawyer, and often without their uh, parents accompanying them, sometimes detained for days without seeing a lawyer or their parents. Now, G4S is not directly involved in that. I mean, that would be the Israeli military. Mm -hmm. But what G4S does run, they supply the surveillance equipment for the detention centers, for the military court where the children are, are tried. And these, so it's that system that they're complicit with, not mitigating. They're actually profiting from Israel's yeah. human rights abuses and, and, and um, rights against the child. So much so that, that um, UNICEF, an, an entity of, of, the, of the UN, um, there we go, yes. <laughs> yes, there's a, there is some folks protesting um, G4S as it profits from Ill Israel's illegal detention and torture of Palestinians. Um, yeah, so I was speaking about the, um, the UNICEF report that came out that talked about the systemic and widespread um, abuses throughout, throughout the whole system from, from the point um, of Israel's part, from the point of when children are, are taken from their homes, sometimes in the middle of the night, um, to the point of um, being tried in these military courts. So the other thing about these military these prisons is that under international law, it is actually illegal to transport a prisoner outside of their their country uh -huh. or their or their space of where so that they, this facilitates family visitation and lawyers and that and it's very complicated of course between the West Bank and Israel because permits need to be applied for they can be very difficult to get the expense involved and all of that well it's against international law right. so right. again it's it's a, a G4S is profiting from facilitating this this uh, abuse of human rights and the rights of the child. Um, 
And then also one other grievance um, in the fourth category of grievance towards G4S is it's, um, is it's been, um, it's had some issues around, well, they were, they were responsible for providing security for the 2012 Olympics, and they fell short of that. And also there's been issues with um, uh, some fraud, and even, even with, the, uh, with the United States, and they've, they've lost some, uh, oh great, they've lost some contracts over that. So, so those are the four major areas of, of grievances. And so earlier this evening, I was actually at the board meeting for the Sacramento Regional Transit. Um, they, they meet twice a month. And we've been engaging with them, as I mentioned earlier. I for have the a last question about that as okay. well. Mm -hmm. who, who is on the board there? Oh, there are um, Aren't there some nine. Of our well, yes, on the, the, board? the board is composed, comprised of council members from Folsom, from, um, from Elk Grove, and um, Obviously, from the city of Sacramento, but also from um, from the county. Okay, um, so so okay, and then just so happens, as I was mentioning, that earlier there was a board meeting, and I had to leave in the middle of it. And now, when another person has just joined us, so I guess that board meeting has ended. But um, so so we could ask Maggie to come in. Yeah, or, um, I think we have a mic set up for her. We have Maggie Coulter that's going to join us. <laughs> She's just coming um, off the, the meeting tonight with um, the board members of um, SACRT. And so she's got the most updated information. But, you know, th their main goal at this is to, just to try to have them review this, this company that is just huge. It sounds to me, I mean, do they have like shareholders? Is this how? This company oh, course, exists. Yes. They are a private um, company. Yes, they have share, shareholders. Yes. Okay. Yes, and there have been people who have gone to their shareholder meetings to, to protest and ask them to um, reform their ways. Um, they have actually uh, not written out, but they have said that they uh, they would uh, end when their contracts end with the Israeli prison system. They would end them in 2017. That is not in writing, though. That was only a statement, mm. and that was under pressure from a lot of grassroots uh, people, and, uh, and we'll talk more about this, churches, unions, yeah, I saw trade it's a unions. very long list. Yes, a number of people concerned about these issues, and um, because the abuses are so widespread and because they're, um, they're, they're not just on one issue, mm -hmm. right, it, it actually affects a lot of different um, interests and in people. So. Um, so they did say that they would be withdrawing from the Israeli prison system, their, from their contracts with that. However, that's not the end of it. As I mentioned, um, since Palestinians, I think what they were saying is they would withdraw from the West Bank, mm -hmm. okay? And they would still be involved in prison systems within Israel, okay? But um, as I was mentioning earlier, when people are transported, prisoners are transported from their place of origin into another country that is um, against Illegal. international law. Yeah. So it still would be a problem. Yeah. So I was just about to kind of go more into the scope um, of the and, and support for this global campaign um, against G4S and G4S. And so we can uh, talk more about that to discontinue. Um, and so entities like churches, universities, um, there's now over two dozen universities who've now divested from G4S. A lot of it is around their involvement in the private prison industry, but also because of their human rights abuses mm -hmm. um, or complicity with. Um, there was a very important, earlier in, in 2015, there was a very important um, statement given by 1,000 black activists and authors in support of Palestine, actually. But in, within it, they were drawing parallels um, to the struggles um, for people of color here and also in Palestinians. But they also, they pointed out G4S as a, as a target to go after and specifically said, go into your cities and government and see where G4S is um, providing services or contracting with your governments and, and try to, uh, to get your uh, government to end those contracts with them. So that's exactly what we're doing. Um, so, and I should point out too that there was, um, cities have taken, have taken action um, ending um, contracts. Durham, North Carolina in uh, 2014, 
think it was, actually ended, the, the G4S was providing security at libraries and, and county facilities, and it was people in the community that got together and said, no, we, we don't want this. We don't, we, don't, we don't want this company. We can do better than this. So in Durham, actually, the count, they, they actually well, you ended think they'd, so. they'd want something more local. Well, yeah. that's an argument raised as well. That's an argument raised as well by, by some people. Um, the, the city of Portland actually has a, um, a human rights commission that... Uh, okay. I just wanted you to speak oh, to yes, that. Oh, yes, yes. Well, yeah. I just did speak to yeah. that. There in the screen, you can see the landmark victory. Right. Durham, North Carolina ends its multi-million dollar contract with the Israel Occupation Profiteer, G4S. And we'd love to have a slide just like that saying that Sacramento RT has ended its contract, its multi-million dollar contract with G4S. Yeah, I think we so can do better. We can do better. So I think we should go back to Sacramento, to maybe talk a little bit more about the scope of the uh, supporters. The, all the organizations who've signed on. Maybe can you go back and talk about um, September, the letter that was sure, sent? Sure, sure. Yeah. So here in Sacramento, we, I don't know if you covered this, we sent a letter, 25 organizations sent, signed a letter that went to Sacramento Regional Transit saying G4S has, is involved with, complicit with, involved with profiting from human rights violations around the world. We know their contract is up in June. We're asking you not to extend it. Uh, it's a three-year contract with the possibility of two one-year extensions. And so if they don't extend it, they don't have to give any reason not to extend it. They can simply not do it. They can go out with a new RFP, uh, request for proposals, and get a new contractor. In this past, it's almost been six months now, we now have over 60 groups who have either signed the letter or sent their own letter. And it's a diverse set of groups. We've got letters from the Sierra Club, from the... Um, Japanese American Citizens League, the Democratic uh, Party Central Committee just passed a resolution. Of course, we've got letters from churches. Um, and we've got a pretty diverse group of uh, signatures on the uh, this letter to yeah, regional well, and transit. And I was going to well. ask about the petition, too. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a petition that's got now, it's got almost 1,500 signatures, most of whom I'd say. 80% of whom are area people. There are some people that are outside the area. So it's, it's kind of interesting, you know, we've been raising this issue with RT, and it seems like, I mean, to some people it goes, well, it seems like kind of a no-brainer. It's interesting that you brought up the issue of being a local company. Mm -hmm. They actually got points mm -hmm. for being a local company, according, yes, because regional transit defined local as having a local office. <laughs> so that makes, you know, I mean, it's crazy, it right? It makes Walmart sense. a local company right, and, you right. know, Monsanto and all these people. If they have an office here, they're a local company. So um, the reason they have RT, and I don't know if you covered this, is that they used to have Wacken Hut, which right. is it, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so they grandfathered they in They essentially on that. grandfathered yeah. them in and, um, you know, have not, you know, have, haven't made any changes. And so in the course of time, so we, we sent them a letter in September we met with some of the some of the there are three county supervisors four sacramento city council people they have the bulk of the votes on the rt board the votes are weighted so folsom's got a handful of votes rancho cordova citrus heights and um elk grove but the bulk of the voting is is the city and county and so we've we've met with the ones that would meet with us but still they didn't put it on the agenda they didn't do anything so finally we showed up we were over 30 of us showed up to the December 14th RT meeting and spoke, wait, waited through the whole meeting, spoke during the public comment period. And um, one of our folks pointedly asked them, you know, we put this on the agenda. Well, actually, they had told us they were going to put it on the agenda, but then they pulled it. So we got a commitment for January 11th. We had 50, over 50 people show up to that meeting. Lots of people talked to the board. And so then they formed this committee of three board members that was going to look into their contracting criteria. They have not addressed really the issue with G4S, but they've said, you know, first they're going, well, I don't know if we can 
contract, you know, can we have requirements where we contract only with uh, entities that are socially responsible? Well, I don't know if you've talked about it, but I mean, that's becoming the standard, really. Right. It's certainly becoming the Why standard. Why not? Yeah, <laughs> right. They can do it. We have an attorney and uh, another person who's retired uh, was a state worker who gave them lots of documentation that they could do it, criteria. But that's available on our website. It's, they're both well. available on our website, yeah. on the homepage of the website. So now six weeks go by, we haven't heard anything. We've been calling these committee members. Can we meet? Can we talk about this? So we go to the board meeting tonight, same thing. You know, We haven't heard from you guys. We want you, the board, we haven't heard from. The staff has been communicating with us. Some of the staff mm -hmm. has. Um, certainly the... Um, you know, the, the clerks and the, the staff people who write the staff reports and that kind of thing. Um, and we've had a little communication with some of the executive staff, but not, not a whole lot. But anyway, so we show up and yes, they said, okay, we'll get a report on the next agenda. So, you know, and it's, somebody's going, well, you know, if, if you guys would work with us, we wouldn't have to drag everybody down. Right. Here, you know? But I think the truth is regional transit is, in trouble. They're in serious financial trouble oh, yeah, for, I think, a variety of historic reasons. Um, but this, you know, they could hire a local company. This is a huge contract. And, you know, I've talked to some people that say, well, we need a company that's big enough. Not everybody can do this. You know, there's a lot of private security companies, and there's ones that are owned by Sacramentans, by Californians. All right. And they could maybe hire the people that are currently working. Well, that's, yes, yeah, so, so did you talk here. about that? Well, I, I, on the onset, I said our issue was yeah. not with the workers right. here in, in Sacramento. Yeah. And yes, and in, in the letter that actually people can see on the letter that was dated September 8th that was initially sent to the to the board, um, in that letter we also talk about uh, making a suggestion that yes, all of the RT, all of the uh, G4S workers would be rehired. Um, so, and these are, you know, these are workers that are making, you know, I don't know, twelve, fifteen dollars yeah. an hour. They have some benefits. They are not unionized. I don't know that they have vacation. I don't know that they have sick leave. You mm -hmm. know, and and so if you're looking at public agencies, I think have a responsibility. And this isn't just RT. The city of Sacramento's got private security workers, and right. you know, I mean, fundamentally that's not right. I think we need to have, these are public servants and they deserve the benefits of all public servants. Mm -hmm. So um, so there is this proposal to try to create possibly uh, ticket checkers, which would be a new classification. I just, yeah, I just yeah. read about that today. Yeah. Well, the ones that, yeah, they'll go around and write tickets. The ones I, I it was in the SACB today. Yeah. Well, I think one of the visions of when I, I talked to the general manager was that you'd have maybe at some point one person sort of assigned per train. Mm -hmm. And that person would get to be known. And so you would decrease fare evasion. Fare evasion is an issue. And the RT is below the state requirement for fare box recovery, which means that. I mean, they get, I think, 21% of all their expenses come from the fare box. And it's and just an antiquated system. Yeah, <laughs> the problem is they're, they're threatened, they could lose state funding because of that. Mm -hmm. But it, well, I think it's more than an antiquated system. I think it's a bad system, but that's not what we're talking about. I mean, I think the design is, is not helpful. I mean, they, they got rid of bus routes when they put in the light rail. I mean, and we still have areas that were cut back in 2009 where people aren't being served. and. You know, there's a host of issues around that. But that said, RT can have a responsible, either hire, hire people in-house or hire a responsible company. And that, that's our point. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I was talking to somebody today, and said, well, we, you know, we can't do this overnight. And I said, well, yeah, but we, we did come to you six months ago. Right. You know, and, and I'm not saying they don't have stuff to do and all that kind of thing, but, you it's, know. It's important. Right. And, you know, so many people use light rail, like myself, on a daily basis, and you know, knowing that the company that that's yeah, handling yeah. the security would like to know that we can trust them, and that you know the company is is legit and not 
you know, causing harm somewhere else. Yeah, and I, did you talk about the recent stuff with, with G4S? Well, I spoke about, um, about the juvenile detention centers yeah. here in the United States and also in the UK. Yeah, and that the Labor um, Party yeah. has called for G4S to lose its contract. Mm -hmm. And in fact, G4S said, well, maybe we should give up these contracts. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. the, the thing about their, their contracting in uh, Israel-Palestine is, you know, they can say whatever they want till they actually do something. They've been making noises mm -hmm. for, you know, several years because there is a global campaign. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so. And hopefully, you know, picks up steam and, and we get them out because right. we need more thoughtful companies that are going to be doing security and not just you know, to harm people, yeah, mm -hmm. or children, or right. anybody. Right, and yeah, well, children, whether they're in prisons in Florida, mm -hmm. or, you know, in Palestine, or prisons in, in the UK, or in South Africa, or, you know, I think they're, they're doing stuff in some Asian countries, mm -hmm. you know, well, we or, have, or immigrants that are being, you know, detained. We have about two minutes left, so okay. I just wanted you guys to be able to get your most important points out before the show ends. Did you put our website and all that yeah. up there? Yeah. yeah, and there's a lot of information on the website, and we invite all the viewers to, to look and sign the petition, because we are still accepting that. Um, and what, just ending with one thing, I think a lot of us are concerned, you know, if, if we're fortunate to, to have money to put put away somewhere, we're looking to do, to have it invested in supporting socially responsible mm -hmm. um, entities. And I think we need to expect the same thing of our, of, our, of our government entities. And one of the things, actually, is that in, if people look at the um, analysis provided for how um, RT really has in their hands already a policy that will allow them to actually screen for um, socially responsible, uh, a socially responsible screen for human rights, for labor rights, for environmental rights, all of this. And they have it in their disposal. They just need to put the criteria. Not be afraid to, right. to do that and they really can do the right thing um, and it's not a it's not a major effort that they they have to do and they have the ability to end the contract it expires in June of this year and they need to make that decision and given that they're thinking about um, hiring these 30 ticket um, checkers, checkers mm -hmm. and then possibly decreasing the um, G4S workers, that changes the contract. Why don't they actually just let the contract expire right. and start, start fresh, fresh um, consider in-house, more in-house, yeah. and if they can't do that, at least to... Um, put the socially responsible screen in place. Well, I want to thank you both for coming and, and giving out this wonderful information because people don't, I'm sure pe most people have no clue about this. Well, they're going to get to know And <laughs> Yeah, I, you need to go on the website, you need to sign the petition, and thank you. I'm really glad that you guys are out there doing this. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. Yay. And Nancy was at the meeting too. <laughs>